do you know this story of this man who's lying on his deathbed with his wife next to him, asking him what his last words are? The man looks into the eyes of his wife and says, darling, I wish I had spent more time in the office. Now, culturally, the office is not the place where we imagine to spend most of our lives. But why? What is it that we need, but seem not to find in the office? And how is this going to unfold now that the world is remote? Because with most of the influential companies announcing that they are staying remote, we're seeing the start of a true revolution. But this revolution is not about deciding whether offices are a good or a bad place to be. It's not about deciding where people work. No, this remote revolution is about rethinking, redesigning, and rebuilding the way organizations function and how we lead people remotely. And that's why I believe that this remote revolution is our best window of opportunity to make a lasting positive impact. And that's why I am here today to change your views on remote work by showing you three opportunities in remote work that most leaders are not yet fully aware of. And those three opportunities will not only be part of shaping the future of work, they will also reconnect the remote workplace to what we people need. And those three things are trust, purpose, and strength. Now let us start with trust, shall we? Who of you ever experienced the need to clock in and clock out in the workplace? You know, to track your time. How did you feel? Right, well, my friend last year told me that she had quit her job. And when I asked her why, she told me that on one afternoon she went to the doctor with her little child. When she came back home, she got a phone call. It was her supervisor. He asked her why she wasn't working that afternoon. When she later found out that this company was tracking the activity on all the remote laptops, she felt so untrusted as a person that she left this job on literally on the same day. Now she's okay now, but with this story, we probably all of us remember situations in which we felt untrusted in the workplace. And I do for sure, and I also remember just how bad I felt as a human being, not being trusted. This remote revolution gives us new opportunities. Opportunities to build new organizations, new company cultures, where we have real trust at the core. Because when the world went remote, you would expect automatically that the supervisory aspects of an office place would, would fall away and that trust would increase. But the opposite is true. Because in 2020, 79% of people reported some level of micromanagement in the remote workplace. Micromanagement is the opposite of trust. It's the number one killer of psychological safety in the workplace. And when we people feel untrusted, we are unhappier, we perform less, and we leave companies faster. And that is a real problem, because trust has value for human satisfaction in the workplace and for businesses. Because in a study done by Watson Wyatt, a large HR company, they found that high trust organizations have a three times higher output to shareholders compared to low trust organizations. So when we people feel trusted in the workplace, we excel. But we have forgotten to 
give freedom and autonomy to people in the workplace. And we can prove it with this high level of micromanagement that was reported in 2020. This relates to remote work because trust has always been important. It's not now that trust is more important than in the past. But this remote revolution does more than changing the way we work. This remote revolution also exposes companies and leaders. Suddenly we are able to see whether it was real trust or fake trust back in those office days. Now, remote revolu this remote revolution gives us the opportunity to build new company cultures with real trust at the core. How? Leaders must design the organization around giving autonomy and freedom to people in the company. It is essential to succeed at remote work. And that is the possibility, the opportunity that we have right now. But what if you do give trust to people in the organization? How do you then make sure that you get the best out of them, even when they're sitting at their kitchen table? Well, to do that, people need to really understand why their work matters. And this leads me to point number two, purpose. Because when we are sitting in an office space, it is easy to feel like you're in it together. You know, we're aiming for the same thing. But when you're sitting at home, it becomes very difficult to feel like you belong to a team and working on something meaningful. And that is where purpose comes in. And I've seen the value of purpose in my management career. Because at age 24, I got promoted to a warehouse director and I, I was very inexperienced. I, I struggled a lot, as a matter of fact. But thankfully, I had a colleague, Steve. He was 40 years older than me. And he decided to mentor me. And so, we would go on a trip through the warehouse to observe people working. And he would ask me, Leon, what do you see here? And I would look around and I would say, well, I see people working, all good. And he would say, no, you're wrong. What you see here is lethargy. They are tired. I said, tired? They started working an hour ago. How can they be tired already? He said, no, they're not tired because of that. They are tired because they lack energy, enthusiasm, and motivation in their job. I said, okay, you got my attention. Why is that? He then told me something, which still today is deeply in my belief system. He told me that day, what they need here is to understand why it matters to spend here most of their lifetime picking up pallets and putting them in trucks. What they need is purpose, and it's your job as a leader to give it to them. I was blown away by those words. I even didn't really understand them back in those days. But throughout my 20 years of leading people and teams, I got to see the value of purpose in the workplace for both people and the business. And there's data too to prove that. Because a large management consulting company did research towards purpose in organizations and they found that 83% of people want a purpose in their job to find a deeper meaning in day-to-day -day work life. But in the same study, only 21% of people said that they actually find purpose and this is, this is too low, because just like with trust, purpose motivates us to show up and makes us feel good about what we do. And when people in the workplace feel good about what they do, they're more engaged. And when people are more engaged, it's not only good for satisfaction in the workplace, it always leads to better business results. How does this relate to remote work then? 
Well, imagine you're sitting at home at your kitchen table, not understanding why it matters to today do that work. What is the importance of your work? The risk is that work becomes very transactional, lonely. There's even a risk that people become commodities, just being paid for a to-do list. And we must avoid that. Because as we've seen with, with trust, purpose has value for people and businesses in the workplace. And what leaders must realize is that for people to succeed at their kitchen table, they really need to understand why their work matters. How can leaders do that? By designing the organization around an articulate mission and vision statement, having powerful company values with which people really resonate so that they feel they belong to a team with a meaning, even when they're sitting at home. That is the opportunity we have right now with this remote revolution. But what if you do give trust and purpose to the people in the organization? How do you make sure that they stay engaged and stay motivated? Well, to do that, people need to work within their intrinsic strengths. And that leads me to point number three. Because we all of us have this biological computer program, defining our traits, our preferences, and our strengths. And when we know our own strengths and those of our colleagues, it opens doors, knock, knock, for interpersonal coaching relationships. And that is a good thing because the Gallup Institute, who does a lot of research towards human engagement in the workplace, found that among a dozen of uh, large companies, their highly talented and engaged people had something in common. 93% of them said, my manager coaches me on my strengths. When people work within their intrinsic strengths, they get intrinsic motivation and intrinsic energy. And it increases engagement. And we know by now what engagement does. But we have learned to choose jobs based on whether it's close to home or it pays well, or it's in line with the studies. And we forget too often that we must choose also jobs with which we can really maximize the use of our strengths. And I saw the value of using strengths in my management career. Because last year I met Erica, and she's my business partner. Before I met Erica, I was working for two years alone. And I'm not a strong executor from nature. I'm a strong communicator, I'm strong in strategy and, and, and futurism. And not being strong in execution made me lose time and energy in those two years. Erica, on the other hand, is a strong executor, strong in achievement, strong in intellection, competition. She gets things done way faster than I do. But ever since we both work together, we're both happier, more productive, and moreover, our business results have been ever better ever since. Working within your strengths and complementing yourself with, with people gives value to people's satisfaction in the workplace and gives business value. And this relates to remote work because now we have the chance to choose jobs wherever it is in the world to really maximize our strengths. How can you leaders use this? By designing the future organization around what strengths are, why they matter, and how to work with them. Essential for people to succeed at their kitchen table to work within their strengths. Now is the opportunity to do that. You see now that this remote revolution is much more than a shift from an office to a kitchen table. It is a shift in our work culture. And what leaders must realize is that in order to succeed at this remote work revolution, they need to design organizations that reconnect the workplace to what we people need. And those three things are trust, getting freedom and autonomy in our work, purpose, really understanding why our work matters, belonging to a team with the same meaning, 
and working within our strengths. So that we feel good about what we do, we are motivated to show up and be at our best, even when we are sitting at a kitchen table. Those three things are the real opportunities in this remote work revolution. And it doesn't matter whether you are an employee or a freelancer or a leader, because these three opportunities are for everyone. Everyone has the inner quality to step up as a leader and to demand these opportunities in the workplace. Because think of all the possibilities when there would be more trust, purpose and strengths through everyone's work life. We would not only increase job satisfaction, we would also tackle complex problems such as climate change, pandemics and poverty way faster as one global, united, remote workforce. This is our time. Together, we have an opportunity here to make remote work not just a consequence of a virus, but a new start for humanity to rethink, redesign and rebuild the organizations of the future. And with that, I want to inspire all the leaders out there to take this remote revolution as the best window of opportunity to make a lasting positive impact in the world. You know this man, that story with this man on his deathbed, you know, with his wife next to him. His wife asks him what his last words are. The man looks into the eyes of his wife and this time answers, Darling, I am happy that I spend most of my time with you because I was trusted in the workplace. I got freedom and autonomy to have a work-life balance. I found meaning in my work and I maximize the use of my intrinsic strengths to serve this world. Isn't that something we all of us want deep inside? <laughs>